Anderson? Here. Brown? Here. Antiman? Here. Erpenbach? Here. Jameson? Here. Karski? Here. Rolfing? Here. Thank you, Council. We appreciate it. As we do with every uh, City Council meeting, we start with an invocation, and we're very blessed to have Dr. Ron Tunningham of Empire Baptist Temple here tonight to lead us in prayer. What we'd ask you to do is to stand, and then after Dr. Uh, Tonningham is done, we'll then uh, continue with our Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Dr. Ron. Our Heavenly Father, tonight, thank you for your blessings to us. Thank you for this city, as great as it is, for the history and those city fathers who have helped to bring it to the place it is now. And I pray you'd bless the city fathers that we have now elected that they would continue that, that you would bless this meeting, that you would hover over it and give them guidance and things that you want, whether they do or not in every case. So we pray for your blessings tonight on this meeting, and we ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Well, good evening, everybody, and again, welcome. It's good to have you here tonight. I do have a couple proclamations, and I'm going to start with uh, uh, our first one is at Drinking Water Week, and I'd like to introduce you to Greg Anderson and, and Trent Lubers, uh, who are both with our public works team, uh, and, and we're very, very fortunate to, to have you both here tonight. Uh, the first proclamation, whereas water is our most valuable natural resource. We'll continue with the next, oh, now it's working, uh, the next proclamation, and, and we're, we've got uh, Mary Michaels here tonight, along with Jen Johnson and Chief Jim Sedaris, uh, who leads our, our fire uh, program here in, 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 in our great city. Uh, the proclamation reads as such, whereas, according to the American Heart Association, nearly 75 million people in the United States are diagnosed with high blood pressure also called hypertension, meaning one in three adults has high blood pressure, whereas high blood pressure is often called the silent killer because it often comes with no symptoms and an estimated 22 million people in our country have high blood pressure and are not being treated for it, whereas by not addressing high blood pressure, individuals are at a greater risk for stroke, heart attack, heart failure, or kidney failure. Whereas, the benefits of lowering high blood pressure are a greatly reduced incidence of heart disease and stroke, as well as health care savings. In fact, by lowering high blood pressure, we could save an estimated $76.6 .6 billion in our country, which is the cost of medical services, medications, and work absences attributed to hypertension. Whereas, all citizens need to know their blood pressure numbers, the risk factors contributing to high blood pressure, 
and how to take action to control high blood pressure. Now, therefore, I, Mike Huther, mayor of the city of Sioux Falls, do hereby proclaim the month of May to be the Big Squeeze Month in our city and urge all citizens of our city to familiarize themselves with the risk factors associated with high blood pressure, to have their blood pressure checked and know their numbers, and to take action if they, high, if they have high blood pressure to reduce the devastating effects of heart disease, stroke, or other diseases related to high blood pressure. Mary Jen and Chief Sedaris, thanks for being here tonight. We appreciate it. We'll now continue with the, tonight's uh, City Council meeting with the consent agenda. Council, any changes or motions on tonight's consent agenda? Move to approve, Anderson. Second, Erpenbach. Councilor Anderson Jr. has made a motion to approve our consent agenda, seconded by Councilor Erpenbach. If there is no discussion, a roll call vote, please. Councilors Karski? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Intamin? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Thank you. That is passed. Eight to zero. Moving on with our regular agenda. Uh, Council, any changes to tonight's regular agenda? Move to approve, Mr. Mayor. Second, Rolfing. Councilor Brown has made a motion to approve tonight's agenda. It was seconded by Councilor Rolfing. Um, with no further comments, could we have a roll call vote, please? Councilor Skarski? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Intamin? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Thank you. That has also passed 8 to 0. Now we'll move on to tonight's public input. Um, folks, you have an opportunity to engage the council uh, if you'd like. Um, just come forward, introduce yourself to the council, and if you could keep your comments to five minutes or less, uh, we would appreciate it. Uh, but please, welcome. Dave, come on forward. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council. Uh, my name is Dave Mavity. I'm a Sioux Falls native and lifelong resident. As long as you'd uh, let me count the 22 years I served our country, uh, I returned here when I retired. I attended last week's uh, council meeting, and based on the outcome of the meeting, I am sure that I was listening differently um, to, uh, to the information that was presented. I'm here on my own behalf. I represent no coalition, no group, no faction, no neighborhood watch bunch. Uh, I, I worked uh, as a construction manager from 1994, 1999 until 2004 doing Best Buy and Home Depot locations across the United States and Canada. Uh, I can say without reservation the location proposed for the Walmart is exactly the correct place consistent with over 50 locations that I have worked in communities with the same issues and, uh, that we have here in Sioux Falls. I would like to share my observations. When Walmart is in the room, they are the expert on retail site location, optimal building size, and ordinance compliance. No one has the experience, expertise, or success that they have. No one. Tax assessments are not based on zoning. Assess, assessors assess based on use, land usage, not on zoning. Neither the sitting planning office nor planning commission are in charge of tax breaks. Further, the city planning office made no errors on their slide presentation as it pertained to the 27 acres uh, of the neighborhood commercial area uh, when they spoke. Their stated goal of matching zoning to land use uh, was their sole agenda. The proposed drainage runoff control of the property is, is a two-fold improvement to the city ordinances. The 2011 daily traffic count, 41st and Kiwanis at the O'Gorman complex is 34,000. These are 2011 figures. Along Cliff Avenue from 33rd to 41st Street is 15,000. At 69th and Cliff, a quarter mile or more from the Christian School campus, 
the traffic is projected to be 13,000 at store opening. Finally, I heard a discussion of proximity to school property as it pertained to issuance of a liquor license. Although it is a conditional use issue, I would like to say that I'm opposed to any store uh, in a neighborhood commercial area whose primary sales effort is not alcohol related to have a liquor license. The introduction of multiple liquor licenses in or near these neighborhood commercial areas creates an undue burden on existing uh, small entrepreneurs. Our failure to honor our commitment to these small businesses is put underage individuals in direct contact with displays and products that are inappropriate for them. Liquor is located in common aisles without restriction and in many cases allows peer-to-peer -peer checkout possibilities. Gregor's Eastside Liquor recently closed its doors because the, the added high traffic stores in the neighborhood commercial area of 26th and Sycamore could sell liquor with little regard for profit margin. As voting down the rezoning proposal made no difference to the current plan for the site, I hope that Walmart will pursue construction. I trust the Planning Commission uh, and more properly uh, Public Works will ensure fixes to traffic issues and that future council inquiries will focus on, on factual data and will not be swayed by the banana faction. Every community that I worked in had a banana group the build absolutely nothing anywhere near anything group that was opposed to growth and was opposed to uh, commercial development that in our case will so properly serve our city the 200 individuals that will work there. And those are my comments. Uh, Mayor Mike, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mavity. Thank you. Mr. Hatton, did you want to speak tonight? Folks, please come forward. Please come forward, sir. Welcome. Oh, oh, this is for the other one. Okay. I I'm so sorry. Sir, we're going to have you speak when your agenda item comes up. That's my fault. Is there anybody else who wanted to speak to the council on a topic that's not on the agenda? Well, very good. Then let's move forward to item number eight. Mr. Mayor, may I ask for a point of personal privilege? Yes, Councilor Brown, absolutely. I, I just wanted to introduce my daughter, Emma Brown, who's with me tonight, and uh, she's joining up here at the table with us. Emma, welcome. <laughs> and Emma, you were just on TV. I don't know if you knew that, but you were. And be proud of your dad, Emma. Uh, we'll now move on to item number eight. Deferred action from the meetings of March 12, 2012 and April 9, 2012, a resolution abating and refunding storm drainage fee assessments at parcel number 53604. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm Andy Berg with the Public Works Department. Um, tonight we're bringing forward a resolution for Mr. Marlon Hanton to have his drainage fees waived and a refund issued on his property. His property is located basically on the far north end of Sycamore Avenue on the west side as shown on the map. Mr. Hanton owns 39 and a quarter acres, I believe. Uh, the drainage fee charged on this property each year is $1,823.87. The drainage fee is currently being charged as allowed per ordinance on a property within the city for maintenance of drainage uh, drainage devices, pipes, uh, channels that serve this property and others in the town. Uh, Mr. Hanton would prefer to not speak tonight. He is here to answer questions, but has sent a letter that I believe you all received. So um, with that, uh, myself or Mr. Hanton will entertain any questions. Thank you, Andy. Appreciate it. Uh, Council, any questions? Yes, Councilor Brown. Andy, can you just give us a little bit more of a background on this? I'm, it, we've not had much other than this letter and what's been in the notes. Um, Mr. Hinton came to us uh, a couple years ago. Uh, he had had um, differing charges on the property over the years. There had been some inconsistencies on the property. We met with him 
got those issues resolved and found the proper drainage mount for the ordinance. Originally, the land was an estate, which means it's basically a single family residence over 100,000 square feet. Uh, this one's 39 acres, so it's well over that. That gives it a 2.5 factor, so it charges them a X amount of dollars. He felt that was high uh, and that there were issues that he dealt with that were development driven upstream from him and that he should not be paying that. In an effort to um, lessen that impact, we offered the specific site evaluation for the property that is allowed per the ordinance. And that evaluation basically takes the impervious surface actually on the site versus the assumed amount for that type of land use and calculates the factor based on that. And that brought it down from a 2.5 to a 1.75. And that brought it down to this $1,823 mark. And that is what we've charged them. Uh, I informed Mr. Hanton when he came in that that is being charged per ordinance and that uh, to have it reduced or waived from down to zero from that would require council action. And as you'll see in Mr. Hanton's letter, his main concerns are damage to his property from development upstream, mostly single family in that area, uh, damage to ponds and um, just drainage ways throughout his property that he's had to do the repairs on in the past. Looking at this piece of property, is this unique compared to others? Is, is there something very unusual about this piece of property that uh, would make it different from others? Well, it's very large to be in town, obviously. Uh, we have other properties in town that are this size or bigger that are ag land, designated as ag. Those properties are not charged a drainage fee, and that ag designation is made by the county. They, uh, there's criteria per state law that has to be met to be an ag zone property. Uh, one of those criteria is that it be 40 acres or more. It used to be 20 acres or more, and the county changed that within the last five years or so. Um, so he no longer meets that 40 acre requirement. He's unfortunately just a shade under that, but uh, per the letter of the law, he does not meet that. So his property is deemed, I believe, single family. So, And there are actually drainage pipes or items on his property that the, the city has in place? Not or? on his property. The, the closest pipe is under Sycamore Avenue. There, there's a parcel just to the southeast of there that drains under Sycamore Avenue, the water from that single family to the east there. That comes under Sycamore Avenue, comes down that wooded area that the pointer's pointing at right now, and flows north and west through Mr. Hanton's property. And so if I understand you correctly, he's under 40 acres, but, but that's not something this body can make any sort of a decision on. That's a county issue. Correct. The, the only way that we can do it is by this resolution abating the fees because it's deemed in unjust, uh, fee, unjust uh, charging of those fees. Um, the, there is no uh, pipe on his property. The nearest pipe downstream that would handle Mr. Hanton's water would be the pipes flowing under um, Rice Street. Councilor Anderson, Jr. Andy, you stated a little earlier that uh, the rule for this used to be 20 acres, and then just recently it was changed. Correct. Why wasn't this property grandfathered in then? because it hasn't changed in that whole time as, as it appears. I'm not sure what the reasoning was from the county to change that. They're allowed to have it all the way up to, I believe, 160 acres per the state law. They had it at 20, and they changed it to 40, and I don't believe anyone was grandfathered in. Now, when there are three criteria, and you have to meet two out of the three, and the others involve having a certain percentage of your family's income generated from ag activities and uh, the land use of the land itself, like for grazing, that type of thing. So, okay, but going back to where it was 20 acres, mm -hmm. we didn't charge this property at that time then, correct? We're only charging now because the county changed something? I don't believe so. Uh, we, we haven't gone that far back into the books, but uh, I know it was zeroed out in some years in the past, but the last 
handful of years or so it's been charged a fee. Like I said, there were some inconsistencies on what he was being charged and those were dealt with with my predecessor, but uh, he's been charged for the last handful of years for the drainage fee. And that's roughly probably about that same amount of time that it, since it's been changed from 20 to 40. Thank you. Councilor Karski. Andy, what are the, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, purposes of drainage fees, what, what benefit to the landowner is there that the city charges them for a drainage fee? What is the ultimate purpose of it? The drainage fees are used to fund our drainage capital improvements program. Uh, so uh, the large projects for replacing failing pipes, that type of thing, constructing ponds, uh, regional ponds throughout town, and maintenance activities, the jetting out of pipes that have been silted in, the uh, fixing of flared end sections, just general maintenance, the televising the pipes to ensure their condition is good and replacing those that are not. So is Mr. Hanton then receiving some benefit from being charged these fees, I mean, directly to his land? Not directly on his land, no. We, we don't have any public infrastructure on his property. It would, the benefits to him would be, you know, driving down the streets, driving to his home, the storm sewers in those areas, the storm sewers downstream conveying the water. If I could, one more question. Uh, the city, when did the, we annex him in and is he completely surrounded by the city limits? I do not know for sure when he was annexed in. I believe he is surrounded by city limits, uh, by, City Annex property, though. All sides. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Rolfing. Thank you. Um, Andy, um, when did this law change from 20 to 40? Can either one of you answer that question? I, Acres? I don't know the exact year. It, it's within the last four to six years, I would guess. And uh, that's the time that he started paying this $1,800. Is well, the, the eighteen hundred dollars was just set this last year when we did the evaluation, but he's been charged drainage fees in in at least Since the past four years. Yes. Since that time, I believe so. Yes, and he's been paying that during that time, up until yes. that time. Yes, he was one of the inconsistencies. He was overcharged, I believe, two years ago, and we refunded the. We difference. refunded. That's right. That I remember that in your in something there. Um, what is that land used for now? Or maybe we should be asking Mr. Hanton that. Yeah. Could I ask you that, Mr. Hanton? Or do you have somebody who wanted to speak for you? Uh, would you? Mr. Hanton, would you just introduce yourself I'm to Dwayne the people? I'm Dwayne Marlon's son. Thank you, sir. And, and, and your first name? Dwayne. Dwayne, thanks, Dwayne. Dwayne. What is this land being used for now? Uh, it's nothing, really. It's uh, it, when we first one dad first bought it, it was a wildlife refuge, and that's basically what it still is. Okay, and, and as I remember uh, hearing something, he carved out that little quarter acre there for, is that your house? Yes. Okay, and sold that to you or gave it to you for, uh, for a place, otherwise this would be 40 acres and still be part of the- That's correct. Part of the, uh, it, it'd qualify as 40 acres. That's correct. Uh, and that was done before the, what time, when was that done? How long have you lived there? Since 2000. Okay, 12 years ago. Um, okay. Um, okay, that's what I have, I need. Thank you, Councilor Olfen. Well, Council, would anybody wanna make a motion on this item? Uh, Mr. Councilor Urbach? Mr. Mayor, I would move approval. Second, Aguilar. Councilor Urbanbach's made a motion to approve this item. It was seconded by Councilor Aguilar. Is there any discussion uh, on this? Very, very good. And if we could have a roll call vote, please. Councilor Skarski? No. Rolfing? No. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? No. Brown? No. Entman? No. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. That has failed three to five. Item number nine. A resolution advising and giving consent to the appointment of members to certain citizen boards. 
And would you mind reading those uh, to for the people of Sioux Falls, please? Yes, sir. Uh, we have Jared Smart, Board of Appeals. Ryan Streff, Board of Historic Preservation. Keith Thompson, Board of Historic Preservation. Very good. Council, any questions, comments, or motions? Move to adjourn. No, move to approve. Well, sorry. Thank you. Moved Councilor Mox made a motion to approve. To Councilor Anderson vote. Jr., would you want to second that? I will second Thank that. Thank you so much, sir. <clears throat> uh, if there is no further discussion, a roll call vote, please. Councilor Skarsky? No. Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Intamin? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Thank you. That is passed eight to zero. Council, any other discussion? Councilor Anderson, Jr.? Should I try that again? Please. Move to adjourn. Thank please. you, sir. Second, Brown. Uh, there has been a motion to second, uh, seconded to adjourn tonight's meeting. If we could have a roll call vote, please. Councilor Skarsky? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Aguilar? Aguilar? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Antman? Yes. Urbanbach? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Thank you. That is passed 8 to 0. City Sioux Falls, thank you. City Council, thank you. This meeting is adjourned. Make it a great night.